Nice car. What model is it? Thank you. It's a 911 Turbo. Ah, an electric car from Porsche, right? The prerequisite couldn't be better to review the 911 Turbo. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know that I've been skiing in Funasdalen. Congratulations on a COVID safe arrangement. This is me, by the way. I'm having a good time with my son, but I have one problem. He is 11 and I'm 46. My son is actually angry with me that I published a clip where I fail. But I try to teach my son to dare to fail, to learn from his mistakes. And when we arrived home, this beautiful, spectacular 911 Turbo was waiting for me. And you need the Swedish winter to understand the excellence of the 911 Turbo. And it was this, this close that we actually took the 911 Turbo skiing. But there is only one reason why we didn't. And that, let me show you. I couldn't let my son be in the back seat for seven hours because this is not a comfortable position. In fact, it doesn't matter how small you are, you will not be comfortable in the back seat. And, and actually, the front seat is pushed as far forward as possible and that means that you need to be a small person in the front as well. Oh, my neck hurts. I need to get out of here. Ooh. Taking the back seat comfort out of the equation, this is an all situation vehicle. You could put roof rack on it, ski box on top, it has the performance, but perhaps most important, it has the comfort. Let's take a proper ride. A lot of people talk about the performance, zero to 100, top speeds, etc. But the buyers couldn't care less, no? This is all about the concept of the 911 Turbo. You take the usability, the performance and add the elegance that the 911 Turbo represents and you have a unique product. It's the queen that has an appointment with the Rebel and both are as comfortable in the 911. If you change any of these parameters, well, let's say you threw some wings on it and tune the car, you lose that concept and you go from a being an intellectual gentleman to a person where, well, let's say the elevator does not reach the top floor. When do you need to accelerate from 0 to 100 in 2.7 seconds? Well, if you are a bit insecure and need acknowledgement, then you buy a 911 Turbo S. If you are a more stable man or much more secure of yourself, you buy a 911 Turbo that sends out the more intelligent elegance that matches your soul and you settle for 2.8 seconds. I must admit, throwing yourself out of this is... <laughs> Oof. Oh. Sorry I couldn't speak during the acceleration. That's the consequence of going from 0 to 100 to 2.8 seconds and it is dramatically. I'm not sure if this is a good experience or if it is just engineer showing off, but I am not driving the vehicle. I'm just holding on to it during this circus. Oh. Of course you need launch control in a 911 Turbo because then you know that, you know, you're just human. <sighs> My gosh, I'm not going to do that again. Perhaps you think that I'm a bit harsh on the 911 Turbo S buyer. And to a certain extent, I agree with you. There is a problem. Too many people have opinion on the 911 Turbo that has not driven it. As a result, the performance figures becomes a religion. 
And then the journalist jumps into the vehicle, which in many cases they cannot afford to buy, and they follow the crowd in the bends of the letter S. It takes a much stronger person to buy a 911 Turbo, smiling or perhaps even laugh at the imbecile asking, why didn't you buy the S model? In Sweden today, there are only two 911 Turbo registered. With all due respect, it is a new model. If you look at the Turbo S convertible, that is 40 and the Coupe 60. The fact is quite simple. You don't drive faster in a Turbo S unless you are Damon Hill and you don't want people to think that you have a driving complex. I have another question for you. How many supercars do you see driving on winter roads? You may say whatever you want, but a 911 Turbo looks so cool in the winter. I've been driving 911 since the beginning of the 90s and <laughs> getting moisture inside the glass of, of front and rear lights, it's just a standard equipment. The Turbo S comes with LED as standard, which the regular Turbo does not. But on both cases, I really recommend Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus. If you haven't seen my reviews on my channel, those please go ahead and have a look. I do understand PCCB brakes and center bolts on cars that are for pleasure driving and track days only. If you daily drive your vehicle, you know, you don't want to be worried about if you're gonna get a stone in the between the brake shield and the brake disc, destroying those beautiful PCCB brakes. In addition, center bolts will give you a huge problem if you're on a business trip out in the country where the local dealer are not able to remove and fit back the center bolt displacement. That's why I do recommend steel brakes and five bolt displacement if you're really gonna use your 911 Turbo. I think we need to talk about the different modes that we have. First of all, the sport response that I just pushed should be red with some sign saying this is heavily equinted to danger because, ooh, oh, you know, ooh, uh, sorry guys, but I cannot have to just uh, get rid of the sport response because it's, it's, it, it's too much. It, it, it is no connection whatsoever with the vehicle. It's like being with NASA, right? Saying that you're going to be thrown out of space in three, two, one seconds. It's mind blowing, right? But then let's take this, the, the different sport mode, for example. What's very important is that the sport exhaust actually starts and ladies and gentlemen, yes, this is a vehicle where you don't have to tune it because the sound is... Oh, it's there and you hear the pops and crackles and, and we are back like... You can hear it. We are definitely back with the sound in this vehicle. This is the rebel. This is this is the rebel part of this vehicle where it pops and cracks and it's loud and it's perfect balanced to the elegance it deserves. And then we have the Sport Plus and suddenly the cars saying, okay, let's go max performance, Let, let's hit that track, throw up the spoiler, down with the front spoiler and the PDK is so responsive. Remember that I've talked a lot with the uh, PDK delay or, or lag, lag, PDK lag, I think I called it. But remember with the Sport Plus mode, especially on a 3745cc engine and turbos on top of that, you know, ooh, you're a passenger anyway. It's, it's like the car is like, like I, how should I explain it? I'm not sure if you have been to amusement parks and you have something like the shootout or the f fall. You're being transported slowly up to, let's say, 80 meters, and then you suddenly just boof, drop down. 
Well, that is the effect when you push the throttle in the 911 turbo. So I think for the very first time in a Porsche vehicle, the uh, modes actually matters. If I cruise to the normal mode, well, that's when the Queen goes for their lovely weekend journey out to the country. You have the sport mode where the Queen and, and the Rebel meet, and you have the sport plus when everything turns so crazy that I cannot explain that for you. That's the beauty. And again, this is the only car in the Porsche range where the sport exhaust makes sense, but I would die to keep the standard squared exhaust pipes because I think they look so much more beautiful. <laughs> I do appreciate the Rolex Pepsi design, but on a vehicle where the blue is the main color, I'm sorry, I cannot live with the red calipers. It looks ridiculous for my pair of eyes. I know other might have a different opinion, but please be careful on where you stand in the question when you option out your 911. And uh, Goodyear tires on a Porsche press car. Now I truly understand why normally Michelin is fitted. When the 992 was introduced, I really loved the integrated brake lights in the slot inlays on the rear lids. But now when I see the brake lights fitted on the spoiler on the rear, I'm not sure if Porsche will keep the mathematical design that we had uh, have on the regular 992. You know, nine ribs and then the two, so it could be counted 992 or 911, etc. I, 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 it's a surprise for me because I really loved it, but I got bored of it quite fast. I'm going to follow that because I think that's a design element that will go away. Ooh, that's crackle, pops, pops, pops. I'm in sport mode, heading for some beautiful B road. And again, remember the PDK, use it to, don't push it to the highest rev. Instead, use it to get the engine torque, what you would like to have. Make sure that you get that perfect balance on how you would like to drive your vehicle, what experience you would like to have, what kind of torque and response you would like to have, instead of just throwing it to the highest revs. Manual mode, use your gears, turn into the corner and make sure that you are comfortable in your 911 Turbo Biro drive. Again, remember, I have been driven at least 600 laps on Nürburgring. I've done thousands of laps on the Swedish tracks. This car is too fast for me. The car is much faster than I am. And I must say, I, I think it's fair to say that I'm an average driver and therefore I don't have to push the car to the limit to get a amusement, a pleasure when I drive it. With a wide range, especially in the front, I can, I, the, the car steers in like nothing else I've been driving so far. I'm quite sure that this is the experience we're going to have on the GT3, but it really, really turns in and it gives that true pleasure, full throttle, and then brake, 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 and then turn into the corner and push it, push it, push it, push it. And it just throws you where heavy braking pops and crackles. Too much of a revving there for my taste anyway. Ooh, I'm sorry guys, I lost it. Uh, I lost words, but I am on spectacular B-roads in a 911 Turbo and the rebel inside of me is pushing me to a, just a superb pleasure, a Porsche driving experience. <laughs> I'm breaking cracks and buffers. I'm sorry, I cannot control it. This is going to be the ridiculous B-road filming I have ever done in my career as a YouTuber, but here, break, 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 break. I don't have any grip. Yeah, yeah. The 911 Turbo is 10 millimeter wider in the rear in comparison to a regular 992. That means a lot on the overall look. It looks much more muscular in comparison. 
but the most important thing is that both the front and rear axle is a bit wider which means that the stability of the turbo is much higher in comparison to a regular 992. Let's have a look at the proper user experience improvement from Porsche. Well, they have changed the name of the fuel cap. Remember, this was called aluminium lock before, and now they call it Porsche exclusive. I think it's quite good to know that it's Porsche exclusive plastic this time. Anyway, fuel tank is increased from the regular Carrera and Carrera S from 50 liter to 67. 90 liter fuel tank is not available since it is four wheel drive. I cannot stress, I'm just gonna put in a drive in and just go back to some relaxed driving at this point, but the comfort, I could easily just pick this 911 turbo, throw myself from the north of Sweden down to the south of Italy, climb out of this vehicle and just smile. I think this is, you know, okay, it's not a GT car, I'm not sure what it is, it's the 911 Turbo, it's a totally different concept that should not be measured towards any sports car, towards any GT car. It's just a 911 Turbo, which handles like a GT3, comfortable as a Bentley, and uh, put a smile on your face when you're driving in your suit, popping out to an exclusive restaurant with three Michelin stars. That, that's just what it is. A few things that I reflected on, both the whistling on the B-pillar, totally, totally gone on a 911 Turbo. Surprisingly, because all other 992 that I have been driven do have this issue. I don't understand why the lightweight and sound isolating glass is standard on a 911 Turbo. It's a must tick. If you don't tick that option, then, uh, then you're going the wrong direction. It should be standard. I actually appreciate the Burmeister sound system, again with the added comfort in less noise, it comes to blossom the Bose sound system. And remember, if you then also have added the lightweight glasses, which lowers the unwanted noises around your driving, there you have it. I cannot believe what this car are capable of when it comes to the comfort level. It, I guarantee you that the British audience will say, I'm not sure what they do with the British. Or it's, it, look, I don't have to steer. The British are always complaining about the stiffness of the cars, etc. You know, we Nordic citizens are a little bit tougher. We could stick with a little bit harder ride if we can get the driving pleasure for the for the UK viewers. You know, buy a Skoda or a BMW or an S Class or whatever. This is a perfect balance between performance, between the quality of the comfort ride. That's it. UK, go somewhere else. Ooh, I said it. Let's stop for a second and reflect how the comfort in combination creates a safe and relaxing situation where, well, let's say I talk too much, well, again, with my entire body. How many reviews have you seen where the UK journalists say, even for the British B-roads, it's very blah, blah, blah. I couldn't care less about your British B-roads. Make sure they make them properly, like in Sweden. For crying out loud, what's your problem? Make sure that you can drive on them. Yes, we are blessed in Sweden with the B roads, but then stop complaining about yours. Our roads are ripped, raped by the Swedish winter every year. It's actually minus eight degrees at this point. And this morning it was minus 17. You take that to the UK. I just think they are sensitive. Like, soccer player you know they they get a touch on their legs and he's like oh i'm gonna be killed i'm gonna die that's the apparently uk sometimes small differences make a huge difference sport design side skirt painted in external color is something i really recommend it really lifts the overall design you need to protect this area with PPF. If you live in Stockholm area, you know that I recommend Auto Shield because already on this vehicle, 
which has, well, a thousand kilometers has stone chips in this area. All-wheel drive system is something that I cannot get my hands on because I think it works so good. Uh, and the problem is I cannot figure out the algorithm between it because I think it is quite rear wheel biased and it should be. If I do a heavy acceleration, let's say I throw down the sport mode, I push it. What happens is that obviously it will throw the force to the front wheel, helping it with an acceleration, etc. But on the snowy roads and when I try to play with it and throw it, you know, sideways, etc., it still keeps it very much um, to the rear wheels, giving you that pressure that I would like to do when you go a bit wider with your vehicle. When suddenly when I'm just driving on the road and I get slippery, I can see that it reacts. It's, it's, it's a bit strange how good it is in terms of selecting the right mode of the driver, so to speak. I have been studying it, but I haven't reached a conclusion finally yet. Therefore, I apologize to all my viewers. The only thing I can say is I have no complaint at all about the all-wheel drive system. It's a rear-wheel drive biased, which it should be, and it suits perfectly when you approach a corner like this, braking, gear down, and then throw it out. And then I can see in the corner, when I turn off the corner, this is so good. He, kind of the car understands. I am pushing the car in the corner. It throws to the front wheel to make sure I get the grip out of the corner. Whew. What have they done? How do they know in which condition I am in and I would like to have the power in the front wheel? Spectacular. I'm not sure if you need to live in Botswana to need the option front axle lift. I have no problem passing through the speed bumps in Sweden in Stockholm with the front lip folded out. So I'm not sure if you're ever gonna need that on a 911 Turbo. How many people do you know that have actually driven the 911 Turbo and, and really understand the concept of it? I mean, I think most of us has just experienced the numbers and the reviews. And, at, 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 and this is very important because the buyers couldn't care less about the reviews unless you just won the lottery and newly being rich and you feel, oh, I need a 911 Turbo. And that's when you tick the S because you don't have the brains to figure out that the 911 Turbo is the one that the rich people buys. Um, and um, then after a few months when you have actually lived with it, then you understand the perfection and the concept. Remember, just as you cannot compare the 718 Spider with the 718 GTS 4.0, you cannot compare the 911 Carrera, Carrera S with the 911 Turbo. That is totally different cars. But interior-wise, there are much similarities. Remember that the turbo has a much, much more sound isolating material within the construction, which means that it is much more quieter. Nevertheless, as I said, VW70 lightweight and sound insulated uh, windows must have. Otherwise, this is a very acquainted interior. I think we should, considering leaving the black interiors, it is a much harder specification, but this bears together with the uh, black leather, I think it looks astonishing. Remember, you have so much more options interior in a 911 Turbo in comparison to others. Also, the exclusive manufacturer is much more open as well. A few things I would like to highlight. Everything is as normal. You are hardly to adjust the volume when you need to. You, sometimes it's difficult to open the door. Oh, this time it actually opened. And the screen sometimes disappears in the war of the ants. Well, that's the only truth. A similar 911 experience. 
Oh, just a few corners left. Let me just uh, manual mode it. Oh, all this bottom that I have to push to get the, the car ready for driving. That's the blast with my spider. I don't have to push anything. I just drive it. Ooh. And, and, and the problem I'm having is that time for time I just put in, I think I should go on a lower gear when I should not, and I get too much revving. That's perhaps the only complaint I have about this vehicle, that with all that, you know, to make sure that the Queen and the Rebel are comfortable in this car, I lost or I lose. Yeah, I lose some of the connection, I would say. That's very fair to say. I mean, it's uh, over 1,700 kilos. So, yes, and I kind of misses out how much I can use the engine. I have owned a 911 Turbo. I have actually driven a 964 Turbo on Nürburgring. I've been driven a lot of 911 Turbo and Turbo S. The 911 Turbo gives you a driving pleasure for the owner, regardless the circumstances. Is it winter, summer, wet, cold? Doesn't matter, it just delivers everywhere. It delivers without getting out of your suit. And you can pick up the Rebel on the way and the Queen in the afternoon for, for some tea. Doesn't matter. It is not a shout loud car, it's just pure intelligence. That's the beauty of the 911, because it's a supercar that goes under the radar. can I throw down now? Well, to first gear. Oh, that cracking pop. And it just spins it. Janko, you are in the Queen's vehicle. I think you should um, try to behave yourself and be serious. That's what I need to do. Hmm? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going sideways and it spins all over the place and it's like do 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 driving with two fingers and yeah should I put the Budmeister system on and <laughs> ridiculous car just ridiculous Nej, men kanske vi ska göra ett litet eh, specialklipp för mina svenska tittare. Jag pratar ju bara engelska i min kanal, så varför inte ta lite svenska? Och för ni som inte förstår vad jag säger nu, ni kan ju sätta igång och översätta detta här till engelska. Det vore ju faktiskt ganska trevligt. Så bonusmaterialet på svenska är så här. Det här är bilen du ska absolut skaffa om du ska ha en bil i ditt liv. Har du råd med flera finns det ingen anledning, då kan du specialisera det. Men det här är verkligen en bil som skiljer sig mot allt annat. Jag kör inte den här bilen snabbare runt någon bana i Sverige med en GT3. 992 också, även fast jag absolut inte har sett den överhuvudtaget. Inte ens en gång blivit lanserad när den här filmas. Jag kommer inte köra den snabbare än den här bilen på svenska banmöten. Det finns ingen anledning i hela världen. Att ha en GT3 om jag så att säga vill använda bilen till andra saker, då blir det en 911 Turbo mycket, mycket bättre. Vi springer iväg och köper vår GT3 mest för manhood counseling. Och där tog också batterierna slut. Nej, faktum är att minneskortet är slut. Men det här är ju bonusmaterial på svenska, så jag fortsätter att bara titta i den kameran. Så kan det gå. Köp inte din 992 GT3 om du ska använda den till fler användningsområden än banmöten. Tro inte att du köper en 992 Touring och att det är perfekt för att åka på gata. 
köp den här bilen 911 Turbo, släng de extra pengarna mot den och sen kan du åka. Det finns en stor nackdel då mellan GT3 och det här som är extremt stor dessutom och det är ju att värdeminskningen på den här bilen är extremt mycket högre än på en GT3. Det gör den här bilen extremt mycket dyrare.